In this video, I'm going to show you how you can embed a table like this from Excel into Notion. And we're starting right now. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. The first way you can go about doing this is by creating a page. And when you go into the page, you can see there are loads of different options and import is one of those options. You can see there are lots of different options that come up because there are lots of different things that you can import. If you use the CSV import and then select your Excel spreadsheet, what that will do is then import that Excel spreadsheet into the current page that you are in. So you can see if we go back to that first page, that page that we created and imported our Excel spreadsheet to is now called the name of the file, the Excel file that we imported. Now we can create another page and we can do the same thing, but this time I'm going to use the text and markdown option. And you can see the exact same thing happens. I've imported my Excel spreadsheet and it's now renamed that page to the name of the spreadsheet and imported that table into Notion. There are a few things to keep in mind when you are importing information from an Excel spreadsheet into Notion so that things don't mess up. The first one is actually when you import that Excel spreadsheet, it will only import the first page. So if we go into my Excel spreadsheet and change those pages around and then save the document, I now have that sheet three as the first sheet. Now when I create a page, I'm actually going to use the import option in the sidebar. Same option comes up and I'm going to use that CSV. Import that Excel file but because it's now sheet three as the first document, it's going to import all of those columns and rows from that first sheet. But the second sheet and third sheet are kind of ignored. You could also just go into Excel, copy, I'm using control C on my keyboard, and then paste it into Notion. And that will work exactly the same way as the import. So you can see the columns are still the same and everything has imported the same way as it has done. If you have a column in Excel that says yes and no, Notion actually reads those as tick boxes, which is where the tick box column comes in into Notion. If it's a date property in Excel, it will put it as a date property into Notion, numbers are numbers, and the first column in Excel will be seen as the name property. Now there are a few different things that you need to keep in mind when you're importing from Excel. The first one being, if you copy and paste, or import something from Excel, it will always take that top row as the title. So you can see I've just copied blank rows at the top, but it's taken that first row with information in, first to do, yes, and they are the names of the properties in our table. Something else to keep in mind is that if you have just one letter in your name property, Notion actually reads that letter as a date property. Don't ask me why. That is just something that I have seen when importing information from Excel into Notion. If you do know the reason why Notion does this, let me know in the comments below because I'm curious. And the same thing has also happened with that check property because it's now Y and N and they're just letters. Notion reads those letters as a date. So the date property is there. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have a number property, but in Excel you formatted it for a price, so the accounting price, and that pound sign, that dollar sign is in there for Excel. When you import that into Notion, because Notion reads a pound sign as a letter, it will actually put that as a text property rather than a number property. Something else I've noticed is when you're importing dates from Excel into Notion, sometimes it doesn't always translate those dates across. I think it may be because of the different ways you can write the date in short form, whether it's days and months or months and days. So to stay safe, I would go with writing the day and then the actual month, so January, February, March, and then the year. That way it's always consistent when it's imported into Notion. If we were to move around those columns in Excel and then import that into Notion, it actually still reads the properties very similar. So you can see the stage is full of numbers, so it's read as a number property, numbers are numbers, and the name property is the only text read property, so it's seen as the name. In this situation in Excel, I've actually used the sum as a formula. So in Excel, it's a formula that's adding cells from stage and cells from number just to create a sum. But when I've imported that into Notion, Notion sort of ignores the formula aspect and just shows the number. 
Now you could kind of manipulate this. So if you wanted to do some complex formulas, but it's not available in Notion, you could export the document from Notion, which I will show you how to do later. If in my opinion, you are doing a lot of number crunching or statistical testing, I would use Excel or Google Sheets anyway, because that's what the app is for. Notion is not for spreadsheets and calculations, but that's something that you could think about doing. Another thing to keep in mind is I mentioned beforehand that if you put yes and no, it will read as a checkbox. But if you put those as capital letters, Notion actually still reads that as a date property. And in this situation, I've actually used an if formula inside of Excel to get those words. So even though it's a formula and it's being read as text, it will still be read in Notion for some reason as a date property. Something else you can also do when you're importing data from Excel is combine the, the spreadsheets and the tables together. There's a couple of ways to do this. You could just import the table as a separate table, highlight all of those entries, and then drag it up into the appropriate database. If your table is pretty big and it's not just four or five rows, then this is obviously not ideal. So instead of doing that, you can just merge with CSV. So if you go to the option in the database, merge with a CSV, and then select that Excel spreadsheet, it's still going to take that first sheet that's showing in the Excel spreadsheet, but it's going to merge it with the database that you've selected it to merge with. But it's going straight into the database rather than as a separate database in the page. Now, something to keep in mind, if you import a spreadsheet from Excel and it has different names in the database, or if you just combine rows from other databases that have their own names, they're going to create new properties in that database because they won't be merging properties. They'll create new ones. So you could go from five properties, i.e. columns, to having 10 properties, i.e. columns, because the names of the properties are different. Now, when exporting a database from Notion, you could do it in a couple of different ways. I'm going to use the Markdown CSV, and I don't want to use the subpages because otherwise it's going to give me all of the zip files for all of the subpages in the database, which I can't imagine you needing. If you do need it, obviously select that option. Now, I know when it gets exported, I was expecting you could change the name, but I found if you change the name, it doesn't actually let you open up the file as easily as I would have thought. So what I've actually done is just I've saved the Excel document as the name it is. I've then gone into my files, opened it up. And then once I've opened it up and it is an Excel spreadsheet, I've then saved it to my files and attached the appropriate name and saved it as an Excel workbook rather than the CSV page that I've exported. Again, these are one of those situations where I don't really understand what's going on behind it. I just know that if you change the name, typically I won't be able to open it. So I'm just helping you out here. And again, if you do know why when you change the name, it's harder to open it up as an Excel spreadsheet or an Excel document, then let me know in the comments below. And if you've worked out how to just save it as an Excel spreadsheet straight away, again, let me know in the comments below. But this is how I've been doing it and it works pretty well. If you're interested to learn more about Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.